everyone. The City of Muskegon City Commission meeting for August 28th is now called to order. I'd like to call forth uh, Pastor Josh Deere from Lakeside Baptist Church. Should he be in attendance tonight to lead us in prayer, followed by the pledge. And if we are missing a particular pastor, um, Vice Mayor, could you uh, give us a, a, a blessing, please? Sure. Um, Can I have everyone rise, please? Please rise. Um, let's all bow our heads. Dear Lord, please guide our deliberations tonight. Allow us to make decisions based on the best information. And allow us to do so with honest and concern for our fellow citizens. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Vice Mayor. <laughs> May we have the roll call, please? Commissioner German? Here. Commissioner Waringo? Here. Commissioner Turnquist? Here. Commissioner Markowski? Here. Mayor Gowron? Here. Commissioner Hood? Here. Vice Mayor Spataro? Here. Thank you very much. Could we have the consent agenda, please? Approval of minutes, City Clerk, summary request. To approve minutes of the August 13th Commission Work Session meeting and the August 14th City Commission meeting. Staff recommendation, approval of the minutes. Water main purchase, public works, summary request. Authorize staff to purchase eight inch water main and appurtenances from Aetna Supply. The water main will be used to upgrade 718 feet of six inch water main on Vulcan Street between Blakedon and Larch using in house workforce and equipment. Street repairs will be contracted out to Asphalt Paving Incorporated. Staff recommendation approve purchase from Aetna Supply and Asphalt Paving Incorporated. Purchases of purchase of 2221 Surfwood Drive, Community Neighborhood Services. Summary request. To approve the purchase of 2221 Surfwood Drive in Muskegon from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for a bid price of up to $42,000. After 2221 Surfwood is obtained, the city will renovate the property as a part of its home funded home buyers program. Staff recommendation to approve the request to purchase the property. Liquor license transfer request for Downtown Muskegon Incorporated, 1157 3rd Street, City Clerk. Summary request. The Liquor Control Commission is seeking local recommendation on a request from Agit LLC to transfer ownership of the SDD SDM license with Sunday sale permits located at 1157 3rd Street from Downtown Muskegon Incorporated. Staff recommendation, all departments are recommending approval. Liquor license transfer request for Frontier Liquor Shop 631 West Southern City Clerk. Summary request. The Liquor Control Commission is seeking local recommendation on a request from SNM. Camaro LLC to transfer ownership of the SDD SDM license with Sunday sales permit located at 631 West Southern from SNR Cado LLC. Staff recommendation, all departments are recommending approval. Thank you. Commissioners, you've heard the consent agenda as presented. Are there any items you wish to have removed for further consideration? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Commissioner, I move request. we accept the consent agenda as presented. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Turnquist, seconded by Commissioner Waringo to accept the consent agenda as presented. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Waringo? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Commissioner Markowski? Yes. Mayor Gowron? Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Vice Mayor Spataro? Yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. And we have new business, please. Development and reimbursement agreement between the City of Muskegon Brownfield Redevelopment Authority, BRA, and Parkland Muskegon LLC, John Rooks, Planning Economic Development. Summary request. John Rooks has modified his plans for the High Point Flats project to include market rate apartment units, which are more marketable in the current economy. 
both Mr. Brooks and the city staff have been coordinating with the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, MEDC, to assist in additional funding for the project to enable construction to begin this year. The MEDC has agreed to provide loan funding to the project. This is a requirement that the local municipality also that the local municipality also participate in the project. The local participation is proposed to be grant granting future BRA tax increment finance TIF capture for the High Points Flat property to Mr. Rooks. With approval from the city and the MEDC, the project is, is expected to begin within 30 to 90 days. Staff recommendation to endorse the approval by the BRA for the development and reimbursement agreement between the City of Muskegon BRA and Parkland and Muskegon LLC. Committee recommendation, the BRA will be meeting on August 27th to review the agreement. Commissioner Spataro. Um, I would move that we endorse the Brownfield Real Development Authority's recommendation and adopt the agreement. I have a second. It has been moved by Vice Mayor Spataro, seconded by Commissioner Waringo, to endorse the development reimbursement agreement between the City of Muskegon, Brownfield Redevelopment Authority, and Parkland, Muskegon LLC. John Rooks. Any discussion? Questions? Uh, can this be boiled down in layman's term? There we go. Uh, with the money, there's money coming from Brownfield, and that's the that's a tax exempt area, I believe, to 2023 20, or something. Yes, I, I the will. The impact on the city and. I will try. I told Mr. Paul I'd try to avoid ha having him Good. come up if, if I could. So I'll try to, to do it. But if he has to help, I'm sure he'd be happy to. Um, also, John Rooks, I want to. I think most of you know John is here tonight, and I believe he would like to say a word as well about the the project and some of his future plans, either at the conclusion or. Um, you know, after your vote, if you want to wait, uh, but yes, this is the actually the actually the entire former mall site was a brownfield redevelopment authority site. We uh, are able to capture taxes in that area. However, it's been a Renaissance zone, so we have not had any tax capture. Uh, and particularly for the newer commissioners, we've done several tax capture properties in the past. And what happens is we take the value of the property when we initially do the plan and then any tax increments increases in property property values from the time you put the plan into place we're able to capture those increases and put them back into those projects they they still have to pay their taxes their increase in taxes but we capture those and put it back on into that site um, in this case we haven't had them because of the renaissance zone uh, we are starting as most of you know now we're starting to get a percentage of those taxes, the 25 percent, which we'll start seeing <coughs> next year, uh, for as we ratchet down with the um, the current Renaissance zone for the majority of that site, which already has uh, started to end. Um, however, Mr. Rook's property was granted an extension on on his tax status, so he does go through 2023. Although that one also will start in uh, 2021 to do the 25 percent payment and then 50 75 and 100 percent so we won't actually capture any of these taxes this is just for his property it's not for that entire site so it's only for what uh, the improvements that he's going to make on his property so as those values go up which they will considerably given his development that he will put into place uh, starting in 2021 we'll be capturing 25 percent of the taxes for his property which will then turn around and go back to reimburse him for loans that he's taking out now uh, to do the, the development. And then, as the agreement states, uh, he, we can go up to repaying him back $750,000 uh, from those tax increments. Again, he's paying that in taxes, but we're capturing it and, and giving it back to him to pay on the loan. Uh, through December 31st, 2029, we aren't going to go any longer than that. So. It, we're assuming he's going to have plenty of tax increments coming in due to the, the type of development. If he's not, we would not pay any more after that date, even if he had not gotten his full 750000 So that's basically how that works. The Brownfield funds up to 400000 He draws on that up to that amount. 
and that money comes from something totally different. Yeah, he's financing it up front, and then we would pay it back. The additional amount up to the 750 is due to interest costs, which are actual costs that he's got from the loans that he's taking out. He will be paying interest on those loans all along, and then what he will do when he starts getting reimbursed through the tax increments is pay off those loans. Any other questions? Input? And I should add the, the Brownfield Redevelopment Authority did approve this at their meeting That's yesterday. Correct. Anything additional, Tim? No. I'm from here. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Spataro? I was just going to say uh, since the developer's here, if he's willing to tell us a little bit about uh, the proposal, that might be uh, nice. Kind of peachy. Yes, it is positive. You got a minute, John? I do. Come on up. <laughs> When you get to the podium, if you could just give your name and address so we can read it into the record, I'd appreciate that. Sure. Uh, John Rooks, 5349 Lake Harbor, Norton Shores. And uh, thanks for letting me speak briefly. I'll try to be brief. Um, I see some new faces here, so this is my first time in front of the new commission. So nice to see you all. Uh, High Point Flats, if you're not sure, it's located right across from the post office in downtown. And it has been blessed by the new uh, park, the water park right across the street, and, um, and some of the new development that Gary Post has done. So we feel lucky to be there um, in the midst of what is a big revival. And I think Muskegon's lucky last year, Gary's project and my project was able to preserve the Ren Zone extension. Uh, it had been taken away as sort of a mix-up in the budget approval by the new Snyder administration. And then with the uh, combined effort of some of the local politicians and uh, also the developers and a lobby firm that we all shared the cost of, we were able to get it reinstated. So it saved this project. It, it would have been almost impossible to do it without that benefit. So we're happy to be back. Um, we had. We had hoped that the condo market would turn around quicker, and like everybody, we hoped the economy would turn around quicker, uh, and that home values would raise enough again that the condo values would be back, and that we could do this project as a condo project. That's what we do as developers. Typically, we um, one of our core things we do is we have actually two missions. One is to save hundred-year-old buildings and adaptively reuse them. We did that with. Uh, 800,000 square feet in the last 10 years in Grand Rapids and uh, the other is to to develop waterfront property creatively if it's connected to Lake Michigan which is kind of what we do at the Shoreline Inn uh, and other places um, but but so we struggled and and it's the longest we've ever waited to do a development that we started uh, to talk about and uh, we struggled to figure out how to make it work and then the new CRP program came out with the state of Michigan and that's where the city comes in because one of the criteria of the CRP program under the new Snyder administration uh, is that they'll do it but only if the city makes additional um, investment in the project. So this proposal before you isn't something that will cost you anything that uh, isn't paid for by the development's increase in tax base. In other words, the additional payback to us is only generated from the increase in value created by the development's assessed value. Uh, and then at the point where we've received our 400000 plus 5 percent interest, which is um, capped at 750000 and capped at uh, 2000, the year January, December 31, 2029, I believe. At that point, um, all the tax income then goes to the entities that it normally would go to. And so this is a tool lots of cities throughout West Michigan, well, throughout Michigan use and always have, and we were asking for that to be used in this project. Because um, it's a tough project, we are not really going to be able to borrow money against it from a bank because the market is unproven for market rate housing in downtown. Muskegon, so we're going to tap into our lines of credit for probably $2 million. 
we get a one and a half million dollar interest free loan from the state of Michigan um, for 11 years. Uh, there's a grant program, the Brownfield program. And then one of the more exciting things that seems weird because it may sound like it increases the risk, but we think it de decreases the risk is we're going to try to pay a substantial portion, um, almost half of the construction cost of the project by introducing a new project to you in the near future, which we're feverishly working on, at the location called Terrace Point on the other side of uh, the SPX, former SPX, current Hinman building. It's 11 acres of property um, with a, just an amazing amount of undeveloped frontage on Muskegon Lake, and we would like to take of that 11 acres um, reserve three and a half acres for in the back for a future 10-story tower that would be similar in size to the shoreline Inn that could be used but we would like to promote it to a retirement home developer uh, and not necessarily knowing how long that would take that would just be set aside for that purpose but then the balance of the eight ac the remaining eight acres would be developed into home sites along the waterfront in two rows and the second row would be elevated above the first row with a retaining wall so the road between would service both of those home sites and there would be 50 home sites and we would use and basically I'll be promising that the revenues generated by those 50 home site sales will be invested into downtown Muskegon at the High Point Flats project um, as sort of a marketing tool to get some people to buy them to help me get this project built and as a, a, uh, a way to make this happen faster the um, the pricing of these lots are going to be amazing. It'll be less than you've seen in two decades on Muskegon Lake because of my method of acquiring the property being at a low value. They'll be in the eighty to one hundred and ten thousand dollar price range, and uh, directly on the water with access to Lake Michigan. That's unheard of. So we're pretty excited to bring that to you in the next mm -hmm. few months, if not the next month. Very good. Any questions for Mr. Rooks? Let me go quicker. What is the, like the uh, I guess the the, comp, the competition for uh, condos? Because I'm looking at condos and other developments around the city of Muskegon. Some of them seem to be going pretty well, but some of them aren't. And due to the decrease of um, jobs and the recession, um, how do you uh, vision that this project would benefit you and the city of Muskegon? for this um, getting sit, um, tenants in those uh, condos. Gary um, Post has the nearest development, and uh, that's a condo project. And then there's the YMCA project, which uh, I think it's called 65 Clay Avenue. And there's quite a few condominiums in that building. Those are resales, of course. And then there's Balcom Cove. That's the problem. If I was going to develop this into condominiums, um, the appraisals and the resales of those units uh, would make it difficult for the people to get financing. So I have proposed this as apartments. And the apartments, uh, based on our market study, would be apartments that we could promote at 650 to 950 per month for one, two, and three bedroom units. And we feel that we can create a market, even though there's not necessarily a market for market rate apartments. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to come to the city and ask to do subsidized housing or Section 8 housing because there's plenty of that already. And it was made clear to me that there would be no support by the city if I did do that anyway. Um, and so we are looking to do market rate housing uh, to try to do for this to to be a catalyst for other market rate housing will if it succeeds which we think it will we'll get calls from appraisers and bankers and other developers trying to be involved in other projects asking us for our numbers which we'll readily share in order to encourage further development by other investors thank you okay thank you i say condos i mean housing yeah apartments okay <laughs> Well, John, thank you very much. Thank you for your continued presence in Muskegon. Thanks for the great job you've done down at uh, Terrace Point and at the uh, Shoreline Inn and the restaurant and everything else. And it all sounds very exciting. We continue to, you know, 
stand with you and hopefully be able to continue to partner with you in these uh, great in endeavors and investments. Thank you. Well, that's what it is, and that's what's needed, and thanks to everybody that goes to those places. <laughs> sure enough. <laughs> Thank you. Well, if there's nothing else, may we have a uh, roll call, please? Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Commissioner Markowski? Yes. Mayor Gowron? Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Vice Mayor Spataro? Yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Commissioner Waringo? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. And again, best of luck, John. Thank you. Item B, please. Designation of voting delegates for the Michigan Municipal League annual business meeting. City Clerk, summary request to designate by action of the commission one of our officials who will be in attendance at the convention as an official representative to cast the vote of the municipality at the annual meeting and if possible to designate one other official to serve as alternate. Staff recommendation, approval. So do we have anybody going? I, I don't know about commissioners, but I do know the uh, city clerk is uh, planning to attend. And do we know if there's going to be a uh, alternate? I do not know that. Okay. Well, if not, we can make a motion by somebody to place her as delegate. I would uh, move that we appoint the uh, city clerk as the voting delegate for the uh, Michigan Municipal League Conference. Second. It has been moved by Vice Mayor Spataro, seconded by Commissioner Waringo to designate the city clerk as the voting delegate for the Michigan Municipal League annual business meeting. Any discussion? Just one thing. Yes, sir. Um, for the new people, uh, I really would encourage you at some point in your, in your first term to go to at least one conference. It's a good networking experience. Uh, it can. They have workshops that can give you a good grounding in some of the issues we deal with on a daily basis. And uh, I found it, it, in my first couple years in office, it very valuable uh, to go. So if you, can, if you can find the time, I would encourage uh, any of you to go. Um, it's, it'll be worth your time. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. If there's nothing else, roll call, please. Commissioner Murkowski? Yes. Mayor Gowron? Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Vice Mayor Spataro? Yes. Commissioner German? Yes. Commissioner Waringo? Yes. Commissioner Turnquist? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Is there any other business from the commission? Commission or er, Vice Mayor? I yeah, I have one item. Um, I know that the, the county and the uh, sheriff and uh, I guess other individuals are involved in the community charrette over the next several days regarding uh, a new jail or and or a new uh, youth home facility uh, one of the items i've seen on the agenda is the discussion of a McLaughlin school as a potential site uh, for <coughs> the youth home and i just want to go on record i will try to sneak out of work on thursday when they're going to discuss it um, but I think that's a terrible idea, uh, and I, I'm opposed to it. Um, I hope if you have contacts with anybody at the county commission level that you share a concern if you have it. Um, from my perspective, I know from the countywide perspective, it's a convenient location and a building that can be gotten cheaply and perhaps renovated, although I suspect the cost of bringing that building up would be very expensive. But I look at it from the perspective of the message we're sending to a community. The Laughlin as a neighborhood is struggling and is making progress on, on becoming a good place to live. And they've just lost their elementary school, which in many, many respects was the heart of the neighborhood. And to replace an elementary school with a juvenile detention facility what a terrible message to send to the children in that neighborhood. I can't think of a worse message to say, we're taking away your, your local means of education, but this is where you're going to go, which is detention. And so um, I do think a new facility is needed, and I'm sure there are appropriate locations within the city of Muskegon to locate that, but I think, uh, 
I think in elementary school, particularly the McLaughlin Elementary, would be a, just a terrible, terrible place and would send a very, very terrible message to our children. Um, and so I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to advocate with the people I know over there that, that that's something we would like to see not happen. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I agree with you. Um, over McLaughlin, I had a phone call last night that a flyer was uh, being passed around with the manager's name and my name to be contacted about this issue. If anybody out there is um, watching, though, I would suggest that the best people uh, to contact would be the county administrator, the chairman of the county board of commissioners, uh, the sheriff, and anybody else. Uh, but anybody and everybody at the county building uh, <laughs> that are... Uh, uh, hoisting this so um, call them call me as well and uh, help guide you through it but uh, I stand opposed as well do we, do we have anybody here has information on the charrette so if the public want to talk directly to the decision makers they know how to do that we we sent out some information about the the dates and times um, to commissioners uh, yesterday, I believe, uh, uh, about the dates and times. Um, you know, it was pretty general as, as far as, uh, you know, the, uh, a particular date at 8 to eight o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock at night or something. So it was pretty broad, but they have broken it down. And uh, in terms of when they're going to discuss certain uh, topics, and um, the person to speak to about that, as I understand it, is uh, uh, Mary uh, Villanueva at the county. Okay. Um, and that she is uh, assisting with the, the coordination of that. But, but uh, Vice Mayor, they have uh, broken it down to they're going to talk about certain topics at, this, at certain times. I can read that off. Do you have that? Okay. Yeah, I, don't, please. I don't know. Um, the location of the um, charrette, if you want to call it that, is at Merrick. So that's the Michigan Alternative Renewable Energy Center down on the lake shore um, with consultants for public input. The dates are August 28th, which is today, from 2 until 8 p.m., so that will conclude this evening. August 29th from 8 a.m. till 8 p.m., August 30th from 8 until 8, and August 31st from 8 until 1. And then it sounds like um, several locations will be discussed starting on Wednesday and Thursday. They'll start, start discussing roundies, and I'm not sure what that pertains to, at 11 a.m., um, Oak Avenue at 1 p.m., McLaughlin at 3 p.m., and Phillips at 4.30. So that's all on Thursday that those locations will be okay. discussed. Thank you, Commissioner. Anything else, Commissioners, before I go out to the uh, public for uh, input? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nye, if you could come forward, please. And name and address, please, just for the record. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Roger Nye. That's N-Y-E. I live at 1495 Westwood Circle in Norton Shores. Um, this has to do, of course, with the uh, use of the SAPI site. Uh, I'm here basically on behalf of Occupy Muskegon, uh, SOS, the drill, the jail, basically a coalition that uh, we and other organizations have formed um, we acknowledge that uh, the Melching Corporation uh, has the proper zoning uh, for constructing a scrap metal recycling facility. The fact that it's legal doesn't mean it's right. We feel that we have been blindsided, at least betrayed at worst, by the actions of the Planning Commission in giving the green light to the scrap metal recycling facility, which is, uh, environmentally speaking, about the equivalent of a toxic waste dump. There are nasty, nasty chemicals, metals, uh, sometimes um, radioactive uh, metals that go into uh, scrap metal recycling operations. Scrap metals being brought in from places unknown to us uh, we don't know what's in that metal. Uh, we can only be concerned. Uh, as far as we have heard, there was no environmental impact statement required or presented. Uh, we believe this is a threat to 
for our water supply, the intakes for which are only a few miles offshore in Lake Michigan from the uh, mouth of the uh, lake. Um, and uh, the uh, scrap metal recycling facility is projected to run indefinitely. Melching Corporation has requested uh, state permission to construct two docks uh, to further that operation. Uh, it doesn't sound to me as if anything's going to stop in the, in the near future. Uh, at a time when we have a brownfield redevelopment authority, it seems very strange that we should be creating new brownfields. And uh, there is a, a definite threat in case we should have a serious flood as to uh, what the uh, consequences would be for our drinking water. Uh, the flood of 1986 came very, very close to uh, breaching the uh, two dams upstream. Uh, it could have been a tremendous wall of water uh, in the area where the, the scrap metal facility is uh, being built. I think we're headed in the wrong direction. And uh, unless we hear positively from the city that they have some attitude as to uh, how scrap metal recycling is, is going to be viewed in the future, and uh, what legal means uh, the city might want to take to induce Mr. Melching not to do the scrap metal recycling, uh, we'll have to assume that the scrap metal recycling is all right by you. And uh, so if you're going to be silent on the subject, that's what we, we're going to have to conclude. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Nye. Mr. Donnell Harvey. Good evening. Uh, almost a good afternoon. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> I just need your name and address for the record. Donnell Harvey, 2049, Latart, Muskegon. Um, Mr. Nye, I'm in agreement with everything that you just said. Um, I didn't want to speak about that, but uh, that's not a bad topic to think of. Individuals on this commission seem that to think that a Detention center in the neighborhood is a bad thing. It's not my neighborhood. I don't have any fear my daughter's going to this whole detention center, but they might work there. But the place where we eat, the place where we get our water from, and one of the most beautiful lakes and beaches and shorelines on the face of this earth, it'll be a dump for waste metals from other places that didn't want them. This individual is also, as Mr. Nye said, is introducing a dot. That's where you can ferry these waste products in on the water. What if an accident happens out there in the channel where some individual is bringing two tons, two tons, I'm thinking small, maybe 100,000 tons of scrap metal from some site that we don't know anything about, and it falls or it injures, injures somebody in the lake? That's a very possibility that can happen. We should not allow ourselves to be used as dumps. It's because we seem to be the cheapest. We're not that desperate. But what I did want to talk to you all about is these tax abatements that I see that are being thrown about like candy at a kid's party. There is a company in the Port City Boulevard, AFI. I'm not sure of the, of the pronunciation, but there was one hole drilled, 1929 Port City Boulevard, and AFI Manny, 19 City. 1920 Port City Boulevard, same address. I went on the website and I checked. These individuals employ about maybe 50 people. Uh, they asked for and they received tax abatements in excess of over $1,700,000. They also said that they would create two jobs for both separate pieces of for abatements. One abatement was 599000 $800. It was odd that they didn't just round off to the 600000 but I don't know. That's what they did. So they said that uh, they would create two jobs for AFO and AFI managing. The one for $1,120,000 well, one, $1, said they would create two jobs. The one for 600000 said they would also create two jobs. 
That's four jobs between those two people. Actually, the same people, but it's called, they wanted for whatever word games they're going to play, they're going to call themselves two different separate people. But they came to the city and they got an abatement for all that money for four jobs, which I know and you all know, that's just, uh, that's just uh, turnover. Just, just, just regular, basic people quitting, people getting fired, not coming to work. And I think when we are at a point where we're trying to fund uh, essential services for individuals such as the elderly people that have contributed so much to our community and we are upping their fee to ride the senior transport 100 percent and we're trying to find money to do that but somehow we seem to find money to forgive loans we find the money to grant tax abatements in the millions of dollars and we find money for greenfield for I'm, I'm sorry for brownfield organizations that we will not realize any type of money for the next 16 to 20 years and at that point it'll be at 25 percent. I think the city needs to reconsider all this free money they're throwing around. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Oh. Mayor, there, there's something I think that ought to be addressed there. Um, there seems to be a misunderstanding of what a tax abatement is. A tax abatement is not the city writing a check to somebody. A tax abatement means that a corporation, in, this, in, in the case you, you cite, they made an investment of that amount of money. They took private dollars, they bought machinery, or they built a building, and as a consequence of that investment, they were going to create a certain amount of jobs. Based on the size of investment, based on the number of jobs created, the city ordinance allows for us to reduce by up to 50% for up to 12 years the taxes they will pay on that increase investment. So when a tax abatement is <laughs> awarded, it only comes into play if they actually make the investment and create the jobs. And the city and the other taxing entities receive more revenue than they would have received otherwise without that investment. So there's still more money coming into the city because of that tax abatement than if the investment had not been made. At the end of the abatement period, then it's fully taxed. I understand that, Vice Mayor. Well, my question is, no, no more so a question, but a statement of the fact is, an individual, like you said, they come in and make certain capital expenditures. Those expenditures that you're saying that they make or expansions, they may cover a piece of machinery that may cost a million dollars. They may do anything that is going to make a capital improvement upon that property. They can't take it with them. But I'm saying two jobs for a million plus dollars and that and that million plus dollars may only be for a, a machine that cost a million dollars that other six hundred thousand dollars is for the, I'm sorry the, that's the amount of investment they made you well, didn't write them a check for a million dollars I'm not saying I'm not saying you wrote them a check sir the value of the abatement is in a million dollars they made that investment right that would have created an increase in taxes for them based on that investment that increase is reduced, so they're still paying more taxes, but it's reduced for a period of time based on that investment having been made. But it's unrealized income to the city because at that time you're letting them off on that hook, on well, that money that they're it, saying. It, it, where's it, the, where's it, the, in the many pioneer? Cases, it's a very small amount of money in the context of uh, the size of the investment and the length that will be used. And in AFI's case, uh, they had zero employees when they came in and got their first investment. Now they have 50 people working. Quite honestly, I hope they come back and do continue to invest and continue to grow that business because that benefits the whole community when people have uh, jobs and the company is doing well and is investing back into the community, which creates an expansion of the tax base. So I, I just I understand your concern, but the way you were describing it, I was concerned that people would misunderstand and think that city, the city took people's tax money and wrote a check to a private business, and that's not what happens with these kind of things. So, I'm, I'm, so I'm, their, their, their savings, probably the, the one company that you had mentioned, their annual savings would be about what? Uh, $12,000. $12,000, 12500 and again, you know, good or bad, these are inducements and uh, tools that are used statewide, region-wide. We got to be in the mix if we're going to if we're going to maintain and uh, our, you know, if we're going to be competitive, uh, we have to use the tools at our disposal. Otherwise, 
you know, they'll be going across the border or, you know, somebody else's corporate line. Uh, and again, as the uh, vice mayor said, we're not, we're not losing. Maybe we're not at the, you know, the 100% of what we would be getting for the 12 years, but we are getting an increase, and it doesn't decrease anything they've been paying up to that point on their existing structure and their operations. Not to put too fine of a point on it, sir, but I never, I, I, I'm sorry if someone out there thought I was saying that the city was writing them a check, unlike another organization that you all decided to do that to. What I'm saying is that um, we're not realizing that investment. My whole concern is a pioneer spirit that brought us the greatest, one of the greatest cities on the lakeshore. And now you got companies that come in and no one wants to pay for anything. Everybody wants the city to pick up the bill on it and they're not going to do it. You come in with a million plus capital investments, you can give us four jobs, and that's only, that's, that's in six years? But we're also getting the equipment that we can tax at the personal property, you know, tax until Lansing takes that away. But it, you, your, your, your point is taken. And thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there any other members of the uh, public that would like to address the commission? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. <clears throat> it has been moved by Commissioner Hood, seconded by Commissioner Waringo, to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are you sure? <laughs> then we stand adjourned. Thank you, everybody. I can make it.